Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up remote desktop as a virtual server on a TP-Link TLMR6400 router. This is the router. Just have a look at it so make sure we are talking about the same router. All right, the first thing you'll need to do is have the router's IP address. If you know the router's IP address, then it's easy. You go straight to your web browser and you will type it in. So it'll be 10.0.0.2 and there you can see dot two and there you can see I've gone straight to the uh, login screen of the TP link router. Now if you did not know your router's IP address it's quite easy to find that out and just quickly I'll show you. You can go to the command prompt you just say cmd and then you'll say IP config and then you'll see the default gateway. Can you see there it says there 10002? Well, the gateway is also the router for your network. It's allowing you access to the internet. And the point of doing the virtual server is that you could be on holiday somewhere and you want to log into one of your servers through an RDP session, remote desktop protocol session, and you can do it from another network, meaning you could be on a plane an emirates flight and you could log in from your phone if you've got internet connectivity and you can log into your company server as long as you've got the correct settings and i'm going to show you how to set that up all right so the first thing you need to do is set it up internally so imagine we are now in your local network so you need to know your router's ip address and there it is 10.0.0.2 that is the ip address that allows the users the local users to get to the internet all right if you are if you're still unsure how to get it, you can also just come and click on your uh, Ethernet uh, properties and you see uh, if it's IP version 4, there you can see the default gateway is set, 10.0.0.2. It might not be set here and that is why I showed you the command prompt. It'll also bring it up. All right, so now that you've got that, you can go straight into the web browser session and say 10.0.0.2 and you can see it brings up the router's login page. Now I'm going to log in and as soon as I log in, uh, I can now configure the virtual server. Now this is supposed to be a remote desktop login. So all I need to do is I need to come to the uh, advanced tab here and on the left hand side you will see additional tabs. Now if you look there it says the NAT forwarding which stands for network address translation and underneath that you get a couple of sub tabs and the one that I'm interested in is called virtual servers. Now you can see I've already got a virtual server set up and this happens to be a camera server. And just to explain the concept of the virtual server is if I want to log in to say my camera system, I need to know the port of that camera system as well as the server's address. That is the server that is local to the network. So what happens is when I'm fr coming from a remote network, I'll come in via a DDNS address and I'll explain that shortly. It will then be forwarded or translated, remember we're translating one address to another and it will, all my packets will be forwarded to port 3777 and I'll be able to log into my camera server. Now in this case, I would like to log into a RDP session on a, another computer. So what protocol am I going to use? You see I press the add button because I'm going to now create a new virtual server okay the interface is LTE it's the LTE router and that's what I've got set up and I'm just going to give it a, a name RDP uh, you could call it whatever server one or RDP exchange whatever server you're using it now the external port this is a standard it's 3389 and the internal port is 3389 that is the standard RDP port now your internal IP address what is that right I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to show you why I put 10.0.0.5 now I'm on a local network right now right can you see i'm putting in 10.0.0.5 and why am i doing that is because the server that i'm trying to log into that i would like to log into from a remote location is on my network and it happens to be at ip address 10.0.0.5 so that is why i've put internal address 10.0.0.5 means any packets coming from the outside world that want to go to the uh, server the rdp session must be forwarded to server 5 or host 5. Now I'm just going to log into that uh, little server and I'll just show you it's actually just a client and I'm just going to log in quickly. And now here it's logged in 
and you can see there's the uh, remote desktop uh, protocol showing there the window and can you see that i've already set this up here i'm showing you that this is rdp pc 10 5 and i've already got the cmd window open here showing you that i'm on the same network can you see we share the same gateway and the ip address of this computer happens to be 10 5 now very important if you are finding that you cannot log into this computer remotely or even locally you must just go and uh, enable it on the properties so you'll come here and you'll say properties and you see it says here remote settings click there and you see it says allow remote connection to this computer you, by default it's like that which means it will not work you need to allow it and then uh, once you allow it, then you'll be able to log into this computer remotely. So there you can see RDP. I'm showing you I'm now on that computer. There it is. And I'm going to end the session. All right. So that is why I said internal IP address 10.0.0.5. Okay. So then the protocol is TCP. There is UDP here as well. That's often for streaming. And if you want to, you could say all. But for RDP, you can just say TCP. Meaning TCP is the protocol. It's a reliable protocol. Whereas UDP is more like a best effort protocol. And uh, I'm just going to do the TCP. Right. Save. Okay. There you go. So I've now created a virtual server called RDP. The port number is 3389, internal, external, the same. And the IP address is 10005. All right, one more step. Your router has a public IP address. If you have a look at it, here it is. Right now, my public IP address happens to be 102.254.25.77. The problem is, is that IP address changes continuously. Tomorrow, it might be 102.254.25.88. It could be anything. So because this keeps changing uh, randomly, uh, there's no way that I can keep updating that manually. So I need to now loan or purchase a dynamic DNS name from a service provider. So you can get many of these options and I'll just show you two for now. You can go to dynamic DNS. Here it is. Uh, this is a paid version and you can rent a dynamic DNS name. What it does is a DNS is a domain name server, meaning it translates the name to an IP address. Just like if you type in www.cisco.com in the web browser, well, that's actually an IP address. And, and somewhere on the internet, it will translate that from that name to an IP address. Well, the same happens here. You have a public IP address on your TP-Link router, and we need to map it to your host name. So you can go and register one of these. Um, you can also use the no IP option. Now, for example, if you go to the no IP option, it's a free option although you do have to update it once a month meaning you, you re-agree to their terms and conditions okay so here you go you can choose your host name and i'm going to just choose johnson 1982 and i'm going to put this at ddns.net now it's asking me to sign up now when you sign up it's going to ask you to have a username and password for example there we go and here you'll need to come up with your own username and password. So just say, for example, I put in Johnson and here I, I call it 555. It doesn't matter. And then your password, whatever it is. Okay, so you will then have to remember this username and password. And this is your DNS name. Your, well, it's actually a dynamic name. And it was Johnson 1982 dot ddns dot net. Right, you need to remember those credentials. Now you come back to your TP link. And what we're going to do is we're going to input that dynamic DNS address to link it to the TP-Link. So you're going to come to your uh, advanced and you're going to go to network and then you're going to look down here and you can see dynamic DNS. Right, so I've already pre-populated it just to make it easier. Now you can choose dynamic DNS and you can you even got a link here to go and register. Right, I'm using the no IP. There we I said Johnson quadruple five it doesn't matter as long as whatever you chose you match it here because you're going to log into your account via the tp link router so there we go johnson and then your password and this is your domain name <clears throat> johnson.ddns.net you'll say login but in this case it says authentication failed why because it's a fictitious thing i never went through the complete registration now in your case you must say login and it should show you here authentication success you say save finished so actually you're done because you've now given yourself a ddns address and you've created a virtual server so let me put that into layman's terms 
Right, so on your phone or whatever device you're using or wherever you are, maybe you're using your laptop on that Emirates flight, you now put in the DDNS address. Do you see that address? That is going to go and find that IP address for you. No IP dot com will translate that address the ddns to your current ip address why do i say current remember i said to you that your ip address is public IP address changes continuously that's why you need the dynamic dns all right and then you'll say connect and then you'll have to put in your correct credentials your username and password for that computer Do you remember that i was uh, logged into 10.005 well it still has a username and password for that computer so it'll prompt you as you need to load up the username and password all right just one more thing if you're finding that your public ip address is not being updated to your ddns server for example here is my current public ip address and what i noticed is no ip.com still had my previous ip address so it wasn't being updated fast enough now even though i did do the setup uh, what i noticed is the TP-Link router is not updating at the rate which my IP address is changing. There is a workaround for this. If you go to Advanced, System Tools, and it says Reboot. Now, what happens is when the TP-Link router reboots, it also goes and re-registers your public IP address at your DDNS service provider. So what I've done is I've selected the reboot schedule and I've enabled it and I've chosen a time when the internet, when I'm not using the internet that often, you can see it's a 4 a.m. in the morning and I've asked it to repeat or to reboot every day. You see, you've got some options here every week, every month. Now my public IP address changes constantly. Uh, it's changing at least once a day. So in order for me to deal with this, I've just said a reboot option. Now there is another more accurate way, and that is to download a tool from noip.com's website to constantly update the uh, no IP servers of your public IP address. That tool is shown in another video that I have, but unfortunately that will have to run on a computer. So there has to be a computer on your local network sending your public IP address to your DDNS. So if it's a camera server or something like that, it won't work. It'll have to be a Linux, Windows, or Apple machine. All right, so this is the workaround that I'm showing you, and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.